Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. This is the second session on Sunday, the uh, 15th. Is this the 15th? Yeah. Yes. Sunday, the 15th of uh, May, 2016. This is the sec second session today, and it's going to be relatively brief. The main thing we want to talk about is uh, uh, in the other sessions we talked about all of the plots against us and the things that, uh, that we have uh, survived, thrived on, and it's just so many. Uh, this one was, was a home office uh, 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 banned from the UK. You know, for uh, what does it say? It says, considered to be engaging in unacceptable behavior by forming and glorifying <laughs> terrorist violence and furtherance of his particular beliefs and seeking to provoke others to terrorist acts. This is what they say I was doing here. Now, how do I know who told the white man that? It's because there's a group of people that says Abdul Ali Musa. Mm. Not Abdul Ali Musa. Mm. And I happen to know the group that always, no matter what you tell them, would call me Abdul Ali Musa. So I know who was doing the <laughs> snitching. But oh, who keeps, you know what I mean? <laughs> this stuff is so elementary. It's like fun. It's hilarious. Yeah, here comes. <laughs> uh, That's cool. No, here's, see, uh, if you had a reasonable belief, belief in Allah, and Allah allow you to go through episode after episode, decade after decade, year after year, Pretty soon, you are very confident that there is a creator. Then you begin to realize that maybe this cadre, uh, this Allah creating everything according to a, a measure, is true. And as you begin to study the Quran and Hadith, and what have you, you begin to seek out your own personal mission. And this is what we always uh, are talking about when we're talking to people. This is not a, a, a arrogant phenomenon, you know, because uh, you can see that here we try to help people. We're not a into, you know, uh, if I talk about me, 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 I'm talking about the situation so people will understand, but it's so that they will understand for themselves, okay? Now, other people might hear it and they think, oh, my goodness, these people really are into themselves the motivational speakers. You know, a lot of, one of them I like, he says that the most wealthiest place on earth, do you know where he say it is? He says the graveyard. Right. Because all of the great ideas that people had and never acted on, they took them to the graveyard to with them. You can, all of us, think about ideas you've had. And you've had wonderful ideas. All of us have. But acting on ideas and dreams is different. Personally, I thank Allah for the ability to act on a dream. You know, because it's like an adventure, you know. People years ago used to travel around the world. They didn't go. They didn't have no guarantee of uh, money. Or, 
that, that was adventure. They were adventurers. Some of the best experiences and books that you can read are on adventures. So-and-so just left little town Iowa and went around the world. And he ran it. This, he ran it. That, uh, right? It was an adventure. One of the worst things that they've done to the American people is kill their desire for adventure. You know, no matter how criminal those covered wagon white folks were, went across the country and stole all the land for the Indians. But just think, you're working on a little farm here in Virginia, and you pack up all of what you got and your family, and you get in a covered wagon. Well, it ain't hardly no roads, right? And the roads are so bad, uh, you know, and uh, and you're gonna go way over there somewhere. That took, uh, hey man, that took a lot of gumption. It took a lot. Hey man, you gotta, you can't. It's courageous. The saddest thing is for us as a people to want safety and guarantees, a guaranteed income. Hey man, you want to see the boringest, deadest people in the world? Go look at any government worker. The people downtown, the people in the army, what do they do when they get out and they sit there and drink? There's nothing else to do. All that discipline came from the army, the Marines, the Navy, right? Now, years ago, we didn't have, no, I don't say that. Negroes was adventurous, if you remember the old records. Everybody got up and left home. A lot of Negroes got up and just left Dixie and went where God knows they went. But that was adventurous. Whatever you was leaving, picking cotton, you can't do no worse than you're already doing. And you don't have no option at doing that. Uh, the world is the way it is. There's only one thing certain about existence is it changes. It changes. Change is the only predictable thing that, uh, well, whatever it is, it's going to change. It's, uh, uh, a little bit. Now, the pattern won't change, but the change will change. I don't want to sound duplicity. But change it is okay. Now, the world is effed up bad. And we're going to depend on the one that effed it up to fix it. That's insanity. And it's getting worse. I mean, you know, Marx said the concentration of wealth and the concentration of resources. Mm -hmm. That the longer we go along, the wealth gets concentrated in fewer and fewer hands. Yeah, I heard the percentage of 62, um, 62 people own most of the wealth of, of the world right now. Can you imagine? That's definitely true about the U.S. A handful of people, 1% of the people in the U.S. own more than 90% of the people. About all of what they got, all the cars, all the houses, that ain't nothing. Can you imagine? that one guy in New York owns more than everybody else in the whole dog. This is insanity. And he done got there by tricking, even if he didn't trick, the concentration of wealth is a reality. I learned that about money. It don't make, look, if you don't have no money, you probably won't get it. But if you got some and a lot of it and you're not a fool, you're gonna get more. Money follows money. It's just no rule. 
In every little town in the south and everywhere, there was one big white man in the town. There was no white folks, black folks in He owned this store, that store. Why? Because when it got going, he had the most money. So he got bigger. As he got bigger, everybody had to 16 tons, what do you get? Another day older and deeper in debt. Peter don't call me because I can't go. I owe my soul to the company store. That was a popular song, but it's true. If you worked in a coal mine, the mine on the miners on, I mean the, the company owned the mine. It owned the house you live in and it owned the store. It paid you with their currency. Yeah, and you, all you do is just go down there and go to work and go back home and you go to the store, the company store. It's like sharecropping. They switched slavery to sharecropping. You grow on a section of the white man's land. It's sharecropping. But you don't ever get no share. When you pay him back for seed and the mules and all of that, you don't have nothing. Only thing is, he don't have no obligation to feed you or nothing. These are systems. That's the way it is today. Uh, I didn't get way up in the money, but I got big enough to know in money that the higher up people get, you don't count. It's a little store owner. You come and buy stuff, he may like you a little bit. You know, hey, Johnny, hey, man, can I get some milk till next week? Sure, 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 sure. And store owner, same neighborhood, Italian neighborhood, I think he probably likes you. But once he get a, a thousand stores, like Walmart or something, he don't care nothing about you and your family, and uh, he don't care whether you starve to death. It's so all just the income. That's the way the American system is. <clears throat> we all know these elections coming up is all arranged. Mm -hmm. It's a big comedy show. Even I'm fool enough to like the show. Man, old Don, go, he gonna tell this. But I know I'm watching a show. <laughs> I don't care who's in there. You don't, I, but I mean, I say, hey man, the white people did a good show. They did a good show, just like a good TV. Remember a long time ago, people used to have this show. They used to go be at home to watch their television show. I guess people got some of this stuff now. Mm -hmm. That's <laughs> that's my show. I like, hey, man, when we finish here, C-SPAN News is on. C-SPAN Radio is on. I can go, and if I don't run or do something, or whatever I do, I can turn it on and it'll repeat all the news. It's gonna have uh, Fox News, it's gonna have uh, uh, Meet the Press, it's gonna have everything. I can sit there and listen to the news, listen to them lie and make up stuff. Man, that's fun. <laughs> you, you, See the reason they can do that on C-SPAN? <laughs> it's cause when you watch the news, right. They just give you repetitive. I'm telling you, they run one one story yeah. for two or three days in a row, man. I mean, yeah. they just keep on. So it ain't like it's a whole lot they got yeah, to put right. together on yeah. Sunday. So true. No, they they just play all of they play all of they play all the news yeah. all the way up till uh, till in the morning. They're gonna play this Sunday, and so no matter what time you get in pocket, you can. You don't have to watch all the news. You can just lay down and say, it's my rest period, and you can listen to all of it. What I'm saying is, <laughs> that's my show. Mm -hmm. But it's a show. I know what I'm listening to. I know <clears throat> they get the, they get their experts on this now. You know they lie. <laughs> let me try to speed up. Uh, Oakland is on the same situation as Saudi Arabia was on. I like, you know, Saudi Arabia is definitely on a suicide mission. Mm -hmm. It's just crazy. They don't make no sense what they're doing. Okay, 
that's what happened to Oakland. <laughs> Oakland just, it was discombobulated. That's all, it just didn't make sense. And we never tried to figure out nothing. We just kept throwing <coughs> gasoline on the fire. Everything was super exposed. Just like now, the white folks will tell you, Al-Qaeda, uh, didn't Saudi Arabia fix them? Where's the 28 pages? Everybody knows. You gotta go get some backwoods cracker from down in the, the Blue Ridge Mountains to believe that the Muslims blew up the World Trade Center. They just don't, people don't believe it anymore. They, they, they got the first responders, you hear them talking about, uh, and the first responders are taking, some of the women are really going for, they got some of the brothers, he just retired, so like a Puerto Rican brother. He said, why are your friends? Or he said, they're not retired yet. He said, when well, they asked me stuff two years ago, I didn't say anything either. But I'm retired with 32 years of service. And when our brothers get killed, I said, all of our brothers know that those are controlled demolition. We're, there's no language of pull a building. There's no way a building can fall in on its imprint. We have all fought fires and we study fires all over the world. No buildings like that have ever fallen. They've never fallen. You know what I mean? And they can't fall straight down unless you implode it. You can't do it. And building seven, 47 stories, and what that, that boy just goes zoop. I mean, it falls down level. Like, I mean, it don't even, you know what I mean? It don't go, one time it leans just a little bit, but it catches up, it goes straight down. But the guy on the buildings, he tell you. Yeah. He pulled, he said pull. He said, he he said, said he pull it. Pulled, right. He pulled a plug on his own building. Yeah. yeah. And got pull big it. money out of it too. Of course. Yeah. Okay. So, one of the things we did in Oakland was rope a dope. You know, rope a dope let people punch themselves out. When we talk about Muhammad Ali, when we talk about Jack Johnson, sometimes we're going to use jumping in their face, yeah, crack up, da 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 da. But the other time, we want them to come and come at us. That's what Mukhtar did. Mukhtar, uh, we just rope a doped uh, poor Mukhtar. <clears throat> rope a dope mean that we just let them punch themselves out to come with guns, to attack the masjid, to steal. I even told, talk about stealing. I did, we don't have time. And all that stuff about money, and everybody knows, you know, Imam Jamil's case, uh, when we got to a certain, up to about 200 something thousand, that we had turned in and already. And uh, we had that big program, LA, in fact, it was 9-9. It was two days before 9-11. And we raised 100,000, and that night we had 55,000 or something in cash and checks. Same night, Imam Jamil was still in the jail. He called, wherever he was, he called me. And I was talking, I was traveling. I said, you know, I've been doing this little thing uh, now it's a couple of years and uh, I'm running a little low on personal finances. I said, uh, I don't know how much I've spent, uh, 30, 40,000, but I know I'd have turned in 200,000. I asked him permission. He's still alive. He can act. I said, can I keep 15000 You know what I mean? This is not like a, I'm asking him. This is not like a Salakan. Donate to the Imam Jamil program, and it goes directly to him. And Imam Jamil don't see nothing. That's not the way our program, we have been working at that time, 
year and a half or two, we didn't turn in 200,000 cash money. At that time, I said, hey man, uh, he said, yeah, he said, you can keep it all if you want the way you've been rolling. You know, so the point, there was a Negro coming here the other night, the other day. I just come on to pity, probably come on the crazy house, not to pay attention. The brother was downstairs. You can hear the little much now. We just had to collect, it couldn't have been much. Maybe between the food and everything, we might have had almost $300. I just pulled them off on the dollars. Here you go, you just got out of the joint. I've been doing that all my life. Anybody that tell you that, I ain't never, and they, these Negroes, that ain't never helped nobody in their life. We're going to put out stuff like, uh, uh, you stealing the believer's money. It made me mad at the time, but I didn't act like it. <laughs> you know what I mean? I said, this is insane. Yes. Well, the question I got is that uh, in the interim time, what have they done for the community? I'm talking about oh. now, right now, since the uh, Imam Moose is all these things, right. and since they're the ones that set up a new uh, board of directors, I want to know what in the world are you doing for the community out there? What have you done Islamically? Okay. Any, anything? First of all, they're not supposed to be in the masjid. I went to the police department, I said, I don't want them niggas in the master. This is a deed that has my name on it. Okay. So Khadija called me last month. Yeah, we're in the masjid and uh, we're distributing food to the poor. I told them, you know that Trader Joe's food, that old stale food? Okay. <laughs> I told the people, the guy that brings the food, he could distribute it all, they was doing that. I said, our masjid right now is in a revolutionary mode. We're not in the stale food, uh, you know, trying to pretend like, because uh, uh, one of the brothers, one of the Arab brothers was saying, uh, if you just let me lead the Juma, uh, I won't do anything political, I won't do, I said, that's not the reason we opened this center. I said, we opened it to function as an Islamic center. I said, then the system came against us. And now we have to challenge their illegal and unfair and oppressive behavior. So if you hear and you ain't talking about politics, that means whatever they do to us, it don't make no difference to you. I said, you've been here all the time. I said, I know you have to do Malik's homeboy, but uh, that ain't what we're about. The same thing, uh, they never, I have a lot of flyers around about the, the programs out there. They never had a program. All the time, when Tom was there, all the programs, we made the flyer, we went out there and had the program. They never had a program for nothing. They never. It's so dirty. Mukhtar first, he lived right across the street. Like the, the masjid is here, the school is there. Mukhtar, the masjid is 8210 MacArthur Boulevard. The school is 8006. MacArthur Boulevard. Mukhtar lived at 8110 MacArthur Boulevard. Lock away. All of our property was across the street. 8101 up to 8121. He could see out of his house. That way you could manage that property. If all your property is close by, one person can keep it clean up because he's right there. It's not like a job. He moved. That wasn't part of the deal. Just like all of our deal was right here. We're willing to sacrifice our life, our property, everything for our Sabbath. They ain't never sacrificed nothing. There's no problem. So he moved to 66th Avenue 
few miles away. Then after that, he moved to Berkeley. That's like moving to Gaithersburg somewhere, not quite that far. Like move from here to Silver Springs, and you have to come over here every day. He came to the masjid on Thursday night to clean up for Juma, and on the day of Juma, and how much ever money he made, I have no idea, because I told him to keep notes just like I do on everything. Out of four, three, four years he was there, he never, four years, he never kept no notes. All the money that paid all the bills, I put 35000 in the bank and I gave him 7000 cash just before he was acting a fool and I had given him 7000 before that. And that's just a note in the book. The other is an actual account. So I can prove the one, but the other is just proof too. I mean, I know what I gave them. But they never did nothing. No, they never, they never did nothing. They don't do nothing. They don't, they're not, uh, they're like lepers. You know, when you get leprosy, it's not that I'm from Oakland, but he didn't run around and told all them lies. Okay, now all the people that was with him, Abdul Rahman, the Egyptian guy, uh, all of the brothers, Lukman, everybody that was there, Mukhtar acted such a fool that everybody knows if they associate with Mukhtar, they're associating themselves with being a police. Okay, Mukhtar is a police. Everybody, he, you can't, look, you can't go and, and take nobody. Forget about all the hollering and jumping. You cannot take anybody. Bring the police to the masjid, right? And have the known imam arrested for trespassing, and the police do it, and they know they lie because they already know who's there. I've been there 35 years or more. Or one of the last jumas we give there, you turn your head, Mukhtar snatches the box. I ain't never heard of nobody snatching the whole box. I know a lot of niggas try to get in that fish in there. But to take the whole box and run off with the box, and then call me and say, what the six, six dollars in there? I said, Boy, this is serious Islam. You be practicing, boy. You got it going on. That's the behavior. This is insanity. Or to call me and say, we got an account with Masjid Al Islam, and then send the stuff so it'll come return mail and it show. This is a couple of years ago that they have an account in Masjid Al Islam's name, and to have some paper come there to show that they've been raising funds for Masjid al-Islam and they have all the paperwork and they do this and they do that. And he comes with an old Lincoln. It's the middle Lincoln, must be about five years old by now. And this is supposed to make me mad. Well, it don't make me mad. It, make, it just shows what the, you know, you gotta remember, in all the stuff that we ever went through, Allah always brought us through with flying colors. What I'm saying is, no matter how much a parent lost or gained, it was temporarily, Allah hooked you up. We could not have, we could have prayed for more but I wouldn't have asked for more than I, I wouldn't have asked. I didn't need that. I just wanted to, to them to be known. I didn't want them to be overly known. The nigga we give him cookbook one time and he go, first they flatten out the tires. I thought I'd show y'all a picture of the van. So uh, it's 500 bucks, no big deal. Then there's two more flats. So then I take them, take it down to the school. Now my son put them old mean dogs in the yard so they can't, nobody can get to it. He, when we have a Juma, 
he shoots the dogs. This nigga is like. <laughs> he's Tom Goose. No, he's just. He overflows everything. No, but he, he, is, he is. I don't call him crazy because he's not crazy. He's arrogant. He's <laughs> a, he is. Uh, I, told him, I told him, I said, you niggas would have to study for five or ten years diligently to become stupid. You would really have to evolve a lot to become stupid. I mean, uh, that's their reputation in Oakland. That's what they do. And all them duplicated. They must have stole, the niggas have stolen uh, like the lawnmowers we have. Maybe seven or eight. Just steal. I drink, cut the grass, then I put it in the masjid. They steal it. All the books. I opened a new library after they steal all the white things. I fixed the, the masjid where I'm gonna stay. You know, that nice carpet. Build a bookcase. The niggas steal CDs, DVDs, movies. Televisions, everything. I mean, they just take it. But that's, see, suppose somebody is trying to scare you or make you mad, and they got a sign that says boo, right? You would laugh, you would laugh so hard. I said, what you doing? You scare me? Boo. That's the way they do. They, they, actually, they actually do that. They do that. Boo. I said, boy, look at you. Boy, I, I never believed it that, that anyone, I didn't ask for it to go that far. I didn't need it to go that far. I just needed it back in 2014 just to show behavior patterns. But they have stretched out. They have not left a, a, a stone for buffoonery or, uh, unturned. But anyway, another partner of ours got out of the penitentiary after several years. If you were to ask them, I'm not going to mention no names, they would say, yeah. Uh, as soon as I called a brother, the brother came up and you know looked out for us. That's when we're not in that good shape. Now, this is what the Quran says. The best given is when you ain't in that good of shape. <laughs> you see what I mean? It's so, but it's a custom. You don't have to worry about it. Allah will always help. The point I'm making is, in this thing of project management, uh, as I said the other day, and I'll be trying to be as brief as possible. Right now, we're going through a new stage like all the other stages when I showed you the picture Negro and a picture Big Hank. That means that was a transition, a, a conscious transition. Okay. At one time, let's say we had about 10 centers. But we were all only have a certain of these two. Although we had the people managing out in California, we knew who they were, and they will leave at one time. Okay. And that's what they did. But they left under a little cloud, so we wanted them to come back. Not come back to stay and work, but to manifest their behavior. So we start teasing them, yeah, the niggas left, look what they left, the levels of school, paid for, shoot, we got all that property prayed for, da 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 And when the white man sent them back, so you gotta go now and destroy that, because remember, their idea is, it's just like here, 
they didn't want us to have anything after, after we know we're going to go through a session after a session. But after each session, we're in better shape than we started. You see what I mean? Every time, all the time. This stage, we say we want to be 150 million, maybe 150 billion. It don't make no difference. We're not going to be like this. We're going to have organization. We're going to have institutions. And they have to support it because they're not going to sit back and let you do your own institutions with your own people because that's really dangerous. So if you need uh, anything, he going to make sure. He has to. You know why? We know that sucker. He know us, but we know him too. We got him over a barrel. He ain't got us over no barrel. He got to. He, the last thing he would do, we're here with two centers. Everything is fully paid for. Everything is paid for already, right? Now, we didn't pay a lot more for it through fines and all of that, but that's a miracle. That's a miracle that you leave Oakland and they tear everything up and then you got a $20,000 fine. Or you send somebody up to Philadelphia to do work and they ride around looking up in the air and leave everything there and come back here, go where they go, and they take a vacation. And then the family comes in and destroy everything and it takes you off the tax roll. See, Philadelphia, we could have kept that if it stayed on a non-profit. You know, we didn't pay taxes on it. But they messed it up so bad that when the people drove by, or, or the people called it the, the non-profit people and said, that place ain't being used anymore for a masjid. Go by and look at it. They look at it. So now I have to pay two, three thousand dollars in taxes. You see what I mean? On that, fifty thousand taxes out there. Uh, I don't know how many thousands right over here. I got one thing that God charged me six thousand dollars just for having uh, uh, some cars on the thing. Yeah, yeah, right here. See, so you add all of that up. So we own the property, but we have paid triple or quadruple the price by fines and all of that. Guess what that is? That's a miracle. That's a big miracle. And with no stress and no nothing. Now, the comeback is this. I don't know whether they did it on purpose or not, I'll worry about it later. But the way they took the money out of our accounts in California, they did so many different shenanigans that it's a paper trail this wide that uh, I'll probably sue them for $10 million. Maybe that's the way they wanted to give me money or something. But suppose we don't get that. Suppose they, suppose Mukhtar keeps, which is under, I don't believe First, that ain't never happened there. Do you know the stuff that's happened in the last four or five years in the Islamic movement with us has never happened anywhere at all, none of it. And we still here laughing and having a good time. That means that it's an exercise that Allah trained you to go one stage after another. And a lot not going to send you into no fight unless you got the training for it. That's what my belief is. Okay, so project management that from now on we'll do brand new and from the ground up. Okay, we don't have to go into the details of uh, all the fundraising, but we're going to present this story of Oakland and D.C is the story of these decades. It is the how to do it, how to survive it, like the article said uh, years ago, 
how to think, act, and believe after 9-11. We have already shown people longevity is a big deal just to be able to last. You cannot be a good a fighter as another guy. But if you can last five, six rounds, guess what? You start looking better. And he start looking, he's a better fighter than you, but his conditioning may not be up. Longevity opens so many eyes. I mean, so many, there's fitness that people did 45 years ago that clarifies now. I have friends when I go around them, uh, and we talk about something and I say that I no, I, this is the way that was. Then they get nervous. They say if he knew how this was, then he knew how that was. That's his part or their part. They get nervous. I let them know, don't worry about it. I'm telling you, I don't hold nothing against nobody about this because nothing could have happened to produce what we have now. In other words, how do I put it? You know where you said, man, if I had known this, I would have been. I wouldn't do that. You know why? Because it might alter this a little bit. This is better. Some people are greedy and they want better, 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 more, 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 more. Well, even about heaven, I say if I get that part of heaven that when they in the grave, you know, and you can smell the hellfire and see the hellfire, there's people hollering, you can hear. But in the grave, there's another part that you're like on a veranda and you can see into heaven and you can smell. The, the, I said, to me, if I get that far, that's good enough for me. Hey man, I don't need, I mean, you see what I'm saying? If I just get not the other place, <laughs> long as I'm not, if I'm on the veranda and I can smell the hellfire, I mean, and the smoke and the grave, I'm gonna say, oh man, what did I do? I blew it. You know what I mean? But if I smell this person, Oh, yeah. Hey, Amen. In other words, all those extras people want, I don't need it. I'm satisfied with what I got right. I'm overly satisfied. Now, but a lot tell you, if, you, if you're happy with that, I'm going to hook you up with even more. If you're grateful, don't you worry. You're going to get more. So a lot just going to hook you up more and more. The other thing on project management Everything will be new. We're not going old style anymore. And we'll, after this, we'll go from the ground up. We're not gonna go into second classism. The other thing we talked about from Stalingrad to Oakland. Stalingrad was a great battle. It was a turning point of World War II. Uh, everything that was in the to be brief, was in the Germans' favor. Going into Scott, Stalingrad turned against them, everything. And it, uh, there was nothing they could do about it. They was just trapped. And they had a fool telling them what to do, and he wouldn't let them pull. He wouldn't let them do nothing, if, you know. So that's the way Oakland was, exactly like Stalingrad. They had a fool telling them what to do, and they was trapped. And they couldn't get out, and they couldn't, so they just said, be a bigger fool. And that's what they did. No, so the Model Cities program, Oakland and D.C. is Model Cities. That means we'll concentrate on showing our people. See, remember, especially in Oakland, but everybody know here too, especially in Oakland, they have seen what can happen? They can take it the wrong way and say, man, the way the white man wanted it, look what we do to people that get out of line. That's what, 
they want it to be. But the other side is, look at them niggas there. Boy, they done pulled through that. And they be, people be looking, they be looking right around your eyes, they be looking and trying to see the stress. And I, I took a couple partners of mine from way back. I said, look, man, uh, ain't nothing going on here. We done knocked this. They looking at it, they keep looking at it through their own eyes. I said, I am not like y'all are now. I'm not like I was 40 years ago. This is not 40 years ago. We are in a different mode. We are in a different, and we use a different structures and belief system. They don't know it. That's why we go all over this stuff over and over again. So they in Oakland, they will stop looking at things like they look at it and see it like we see it. That's going to take a lot of uh, teaching. So D.C. and Oakland will be model cities. Model cities is, as we de develop community, we develop institutions, it is so that people will see that black people can do it. That's one of the things. Black people who are Muslims, black people who are independent, and black people who are not angry black people. We're not doing this because we're frustrated with the right man, or we're mad that we're doing this because it's the cause of a lot. What we're gonna try to do is show people what feasibility law is all about. Okay, the last two points, three points I wanna make. Now people see it's possible to survive but now we want to show them that we can do Model Cities Project without nobody uh, forcing us to do it, without nobody running off with somebody's wife, without none of that nigga stuff. See, so remember, we have to show uh, the people, and one terminology is correct. They say seeing is believing. But we have the other believing is seeing. If you believe it, uh, see, personally, I already know it's true. Because every dream I ever had, I did it. Every one. I had no idea that barefooted niggas could come out of the South and drive the biggest and prettiest cars in the world in 10 or 15 years. I just didn't believe it was possible. Neither did anybody else. It just wasn't possible, but it all happened. Or travel all around the world and live in the most dangerous environments, the revolutionary environments and drug-infested environments. In Colombia, the most dangerous city, uh, country in the world. In those days, Bogota was the most dangerous city in the world, and Medellin was right, right up there. Maybe later on, Medellin became there. But nothing happened, not a scratch, not a scratch. That's, that's God, I don't care what they say. It ain't no smart nigga, slick nigga. That's God, that's Allah. You see what I mean? That's Allah saying, hey, and the people are beginning to say, hey man, something's going on. All my old friends, they were scared to death. Or they wanted to kill everybody. Hey man, I'll shoot, I'll go right with your wife. Tell me I took off a deep. She was running a mile, one of my friends was kind of slick. He said, we wouldn't walk on that bitch in it, don't you? And, you know, we wouldn't excuse my language out people. And I said, it's true, she wouldn't be used as a doormat. I mean, she couldn't lay down and we wipe her feet on her. That's how ugly she is. Not to, but behavior can make you ugly. You can be physically ugly and good, and you can be fine in a way. You can be fine physically and real ugly in your behavior. That's the way the people of Oakland are. Because the people of Oakland didn't stand up to what they believe in. They just sit back and watch. 
Melo yelling them, Zaid shocking them, Hamza Yusuf them. I all came to the aid. Whatever they ask me anything, sure, I'll stop these niggas from rolling their eyes at Hamza or something. Nobody, they never came by. That was their job, to try to make me feel isolated. What happened was everything, like Katabu movie, clear, manifest, El Bayina, clear evidence, model cities. The next thing is possibility. Sometimes you don't have to prove all the time that, yeah, man, you can do it, brother. You're making progress if you could just let people know that it's possible, it's a chance. You got to remember, most of our people don't think of a chance at any a guy is good at basketball, he won't think that I, I got a, man, I don't have a chance to be making, uh, whatever they call the big leagues, the, pro. the pros, I don't have a chance. Well, I don't have, you know what I mean? Since he don't think he can, he never tries. Just don't try. What our people know that is now possible to stand in front of the whole United States government with all of its functions, functioning perfectly. And they could use all of their skill, including just taking your money. And it don't have no effect. Now it's possible. The last two points is, it's you. This is when they get to arrogance. They say it's arrogant. No. All motivational thinkers, the Hadith, the Quran, tells you on the day of judgment is you. Why owe you? It ain't nobody else. You can't say the people up there, the big folks, they dead me, they fooled me, and all. Oh, oh. It's you, right? Our literature tells us it's you. All we're doing is telling the people what we read and study. It's you as an individual. It's all of us. Individually. We're going to win our own paradise. Well, you know that other spot. <laughs> hey, man. One of the things is losing respect, not caution but respect for this cracker. It's not hard. He's a champion that's in fault longer past his prime. And he don't do nothing to fix it. So he can't get back. Oh, Don, we're going to make America great again. You're not going to make America great again. Number one, it ain't never been great. But what you call great, you can't do that. You going against the grain, buddy. The trend, when the Titanic starts going down, you would have to have a super drilling pumps to keep it afloat. To keep America afloat, you would have to turn it into a kind, benevolent, maximum dictatorship. You got to do right or I'm going to send you to the electric chair. That's what you'd have to say. And you politicians still in the money, you'll be shot in the firing squad in two days. We're going to give you a trial, It'll take at least an hour, 50 minutes, something. Then we're going to shoot you if you steal one dime. You, you can't. That's the only way. You, you, it won't work then. Right. Going back to what you said a long time ago, everything has a birth, a growth, a decline, and a death. A death. So you, once you have a growth, you have a growth. Yeah. You get a decline, you can't go back to a growth. <laughs> this is the, the thing. Now, the last thing is you. It's you, it's us. It's, it's four people here. Uh, four people can probably rule the world if they want to. It don't take no more than that. It don't take, don't take too many. 
they say it, a few people running everything, right? Mm -hmm. It's getting fewer and fewer and fewer. The last thing on uh, motivation is that it's necessary, but it's also good. We get a chance during our lifetime to remedy all the SHIT that our parents and grandparents and all that had to walk through. Remember, they had no hope of anything better. And think of all the optimism they had that it's going to be better by and by. You know what I mean? Okay. Uh, so it's necessary. Uh, and if you want to, dream a little. Just dream a little. And, and don't forget, dream the dream you really want because Allah may hook you up. Uh, and the last thing in closing, uh, I believe it's all going to happen. And now this is foolhardiness or happiness. I think for everything the white man thought he was taking on one end, say for the last 35 years, that a lot had made that the learning period, and I feel maybe a lot gonna give me another 30, 35 years. Inshallah. Inshallah. Hey, if I go tonight, I still have a big smile, the happiest Negro you ever met. So, I'm just saying that to make the white man mad. Yeah, I'm going to live to be 100, and I'm going to be working <laughs> hard till I'm 99. There you go. Yeah, I'm going to be working hard till I'm 99, then I just come in in a wheelchair and give a little talk every now and then after 100. Okay. That comes from a, that's a real belief that I, I actually, it's one of them things that you hope comes true. You know what I mean? It's okay to hope. It's okay. That's not arrogance. That's like putting a lot of trust in Allah. You said, man, Allah gonna hook me up. You white folks messed around with me for 35 years and Allah had me cruise through that and Allah gonna give me a 35 years when it really means something. When you can go any day now, <laughs> he been kissing you now that two years old. He's still working at left hand stuff. He running. Yeah, he killed. Yeah, yeah, all he the lies right. he done told. You ain't lying. Yeah, Dear lies. believers, uh, I just close with this. Uh, we thank you for coming out. This is a great period. I know everybody can see the period, but here's not here's the thing. We're not gonna give a speech like Jesse Jackson after Ron Jesse Ron and accept it. We're gonna try to influence our own direction. Because nobody else, you have to take care of your family because nobody else would take care of it like you would. That's just a rule. You have to raise your children because the, the system will have them watching TV and run them crazy. Mm -hmm. You have to raise your own family. But you have to be around and look out for them. You know what I mean? And this is definitely the last. The Negro right now, I'm not making excuses for him. The Negro and the human being is not able to make uh, rational decisions. And I'll close with this example. They keep talking about presidential election. They talking this, they talking that, it's a shame. It's not a shame. The people like that stuff. Right. Why? They've been watching, they, who they have, Jerry Springer and them people? Wrestling. Wrestling? Empire. Yeah. All that Scandal. stuff, that's right, that's all they, <laughs> they would, if you stood up there and gave a thought provoking, how many people listen to C-SPAN or something? Thought provoking, they don't, even my kids tell me, Dad, you watching that, st you seen that a hundred times, I know, but I learn stuff every time. You seen that documentary uh, 20 times. 
or another one like it, I said, it's okay. They don't want to watch it. When I sit with my friend sometimes, right. I just listen to the Negro come past with his music, and I can't stand it. I don't know how he get it, man. And I'm going to have to do that. And I'm saying to myself, if you hear that all day long, you know they walk around and stuff in the ears now. You talking about thought provoking. You got to have something that provoke the thought to think. That's, that's all they hear. That's the point. See, uh, the, the people, <laughs> well, when we were younger, they programmed the TV for eighth grade. Now they program it for sixth grade. It, uh, it, no, it was during during it, no two thousand eight. It right. was fifth grade. Yeah. Good. So it may they right down to four. It now. may be down to four. Good God Almighty. Yeah. For 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 Obama's election, the first one it was fifth grade. So it's kind of <laughs> okay. So that means that we got to help the people. You know what I mean? And I say to people, all humanity, we're not a racial profile, we right here with the Negro, but the poor white kids is using more dope than niggas now. And I'm not over sympathetic because the poor white folks is being oppressed, <laughs> but it hurt. They, when niggas get addicted to heroin, it hurts bad. Boy, but white folks, they hurt, they just hurt more. <laughs> they say 72 people a day yeah. die in this country over overdose. Overdose. 72 people a day. Of heroin and other opiates and this old new type of dope. We, we got to get busy. It's a, it's a calling. So we thank everyone for uh, paying attention. I don't mean to use up all your time, but... Uh, I just want to get this message out and uh, the people watch it on uh, whatever that uh, stuff. So we want to help by getting the message out. Thank you very much.